Welcome back to John Madden Sales. Today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. Recently we asked our Facebook fans to submit some questions that they'd like answered. And today we have John and Beezy here ready to answer. Hi Becky. <laughs> How's it going? Okay. <laughs> um, our first question comes from Heather. She asks, what is the first thing with confirmation that you look at when considering a meter 60 horse? Well, the first thing I look at would be the same with a 160 horse or any horse that I was interested in purchasing or leasing or whatever, and that's looking at the feet. Um, no foot, no horse is the best expression you can ever have. And so I start at the bottom and then go up, and I don't want a real heavy horse. I don't want a real muttony horse, you know, which I, maybe that's old fashioned muttony, but heavy muscle, heavy, you know, thick horse. I don't want that. I like a thoroughbred type horse. And uh, it should have good confirmation. And I can go through confirmation now, everything, but uh, there's plenty of books out there, plenty of places to see it. Years ago, I did a thing with Practical Horseman for confirmation for jumpers. But basically, it should look like, it should look like an athlete, not like a plow horse, not like a, a draft horse. It should look like an athlete. And uh, I generally go from the, the bottom to the top and finishing making sure that they have a really good expression, really good eye. Bees, you got anything to add to that? Uh, I, was, I agree with all that. I would say the first thing I notice when we walk in is the expression of the horse and the eye that he has. And uh, kind of gives you an indication of whether you're going to already, whether you like the horse or don't like the horse. Catherine had a similar question asking, what are the most important things that you look for in a good amateur jumper? I think uh, in an amateur jumper, again, you have similar qualities that you would look for in any horse, but uh, you have uh, soundness, carefulness, braveness, temperament, um, and what you might emphasize for me might be a little different than what you emphasize for an amateur. So for an amateur, I think the temperament is extremely important. Um, they need to be easy to work with, um, willing to help out <laughs> at times and forgiving. Um, and then the carefulness depends on the, the level of experience and level of uh, ability of the rider. So um, if you have quite a good amateur rider, you need a pretty careful horse. If you have an amateur rider that's maybe just stepping up to a bigger division, you need, you put more emphasis on scope and a little less on carefulness. My, my biggest thing is the, the character of the horse, not just the bravery, not just the, the, the overall character of, is he a good guy, is it, is it, is it a good egg? And I think really specifically what you can look at early on is the quality of the gallop. So you want a horse that can lengthen, can shorten, can stay the same very well that can jump a jump and not get really disrupted, that they have uh, quite, quite a bit like a metronome. So that's a specific you could look for. This question is specifically for BZ. Leo wanted to know, what advice would BZ give to a teenage rider? What did BZ wish someone had shared with her at that age? I don't know that I have anything I wish somebody had shared with me, but um, what I know from experience is uh, concentrate, obviously, on your on your riding if that's what you want to focus on. But if you want to be a rider, you need a, a lot of other skills too. Um, you need to be able to teach for one thing, because that's really how you get your best sponsors. That's how I got all of my uh, sponsors or owners of horses, and um, I think learn have to be able to see the big picture and manage everything so you need to be sharp about scheduling and sharp about what's going on during the day and you have to be able to impress people you impress people around you and impress your boss impress owner future potential owners or clients with that our next question comes from Deanna she was looking for a little help with her position she asked for tips for helping to stabilize a wandering leg while jumping Hi Deanna, that uh, sounds like a symptom of a problem. So the leg is the foundation, just like the foundation underneath your house. 
So you'll need to develop your skills and develop your habits of your leg. And one way to do that without me being there, without Becky being there, without Beasy being there, without your trainer being there, is to stand up in your stirrups and get your balance. Bounce in your heels, relax, bounce in your heels, stand up straight, hold yourself there for a long period of time and get your equilibrium and get your balance. After you've done that, you can sink into the saddle and touch your seat bones to the saddle and be very, very careful not to allow your leg to move, not one tiny little bit. You have to habituate yourself to that excellent leg and then in the air over the jump, keep your eyes up and that habituation of the good leg will take care of it. And I think for sure establishing the correct position is the first and foremost thing to do. Um, other things you can do is to work some of those stirrups both on the flat and jumping. That'll help strengthen your leg, especially if you're somebody that only rides one, maybe two horses a day. You need some uh, exercises without stirrups to make yourself stronger. Our next question comes from Marguerite. She asked, how do you promote good stomach health in your horses? Well, the first thing I would say is it goes on with general health. So everything we try to do, whether it's, you know, trying to keep the horses sound or good stomach health or good mental health or good digestive, whatever health is just, I think the best way to attack is just general overall health. What does that mean? Decide what the horses need and make sure they get it. They need time to rest. They need exercise. They need clean, fresh water. They need good feet, good hard feet, good uh, hay, good forage. So we bet on straw so that the horses can nibble all the time when we control their hay intake. We give them coarse Timothy hay and we have uh, cavalor feed, which is fantastic for them. So we're really working on good general health. We try to keep as little hard feed as possible and add that in with plenty of exercise, plenty of time out of the stall, good fresh air, water, and a very, very consistent program. If with all that your horse has problems, um, even if the horse doesn't have problems, you can use an omniprazole thing like the uh, ulcer guard or whatever. When you anticipate the horse getting into a, uh, into a uh, stressful situation to help prevent the occurrence of ulcers. If you get ulcers and you actually have a problem with the stomach, then it really comes down to the vets to, to decide what to do because you can have problems in the colon or in the stomach or other things like that. So the best thing is to consult your vet. But I think as a prophylactic, the, the ulcer guard can be really good when the horses are going to face a stressful situation where you can't keep them in the most healthy situation. Our next question comes from Kim. She wanted to know, how do you support your older horses in competition? Anything special regarding supplements, training, schedule? Hi, Kim. Um, well, there's, I'll talk a little about the supplements and the feed and BZ can then talk a little about the training. But basically, again, it's just trying to keep the horse very healthy, trying to make sure they get exactly what they need and make sure that if they, you know, every now and then you can test them to see if they have, if they have any problems with their thyroid or their, take their blood every now and then, make sure everything's okay, whether they, they could be becoming a Cushing's horse or whatever. But all of that comes to reacting to what the horse is showing you. Basically, try to keep the horse healthy and everything normal. And when he shows you, he or she shows you some symptoms, then you can react to it. I think it's really, really bad to try to do much stuff special for a horse until he starts to tell you he has a problem. So that's what I would say, particularly to the older horses. And you have a host of geriatric ho uh, horse problems. Uh, when they start to get bad teeth, or you can have stomach problems, you can have things. But luckily we have cattle feed, they do a great job. We have different kinds of feed for different needs for the horses. We have great facilities here, whether the horse has to be on shavings or straw, or they can get out on grass quite a bit. So I would say that that's the, the, the main thing is if you have a specific geriatric problem with your horse, that's the same as having a specific problem with any other horse. Now, I think in the training and, and that it can be easier because they know more and it can be harder because they're not as young and fresh, but BZ can address that a little bit. 
Yeah, and I think we do use a couple supp supplements like hyaluronics, uh, and we use Adequan uh, as it as it's uh, recommended. Um, but we do don't do that just with our older horses. We do it with all our horses. Um, but as far as training and exercise, I think we try to give all our horses, we try to aim for one or two specific things that we have a goal for each horse each year, and then we try to build them up to those uh, specific events that we want them to be good at. And so we make sure they're fit enough for that, and we make sure they have some breaks in between. And probably the, when they get older, their breaks include um, more and more exercise. Um, as far as keeping them moving and keeping them at somewhat of a fitness level because I think uh, they can drop off quicker in their fitness as they get older. And, uh, so while they get breaks from showing, we might still keep their fitness up. We're lucky here we have a lot of hills in our field and we can go up and down the hills without drilling them a lot and they stay quite fit. Lastly, Jessica would like to know, what is the secret to having a successful husband and wife team? <laughs> I would say, look real hard till you find a woman that has bad taste in men. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? I, don't, I disagree. You're not, you can't use that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can use that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so, no, actually we're joking around a little bit, everybody, but that's, that's one reason we have such a good relationship, because we can joke around. And Becky is great, and our staff is great, and everybody's terrific with that. But if we wanted to get serious about it, I would say it's absolutely, for sure, one of the most uh, important things is mutual respect. Of course, there's love and there's all, all these things, but I would say uh, mutual respect is, is the main thing. Because you're going to have good times, and you're going to have difficult times, and you have to respect each other in those times. But I don't think that's any different than any relationship, and it's certainly not any different than your relationship with your horse. I agree, and I think uh, our relationship started out that I worked for John, so I think, I don't know if that helped or not, but it's uh, kind of just gradually evolved, evolved into more and more of a partnership than me working for him, but in the end still, I think he's, he's kind of not really the boss, but in the end, uh, the last line, he's last in line when it comes to decision making and stuff like that. So we do have some hierarchy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us for a Q&A session with John and Beezy. If you like what you see and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram.